the only reason why I drew all that, because you are really, really good at this, is to talk about inequalities. So let's just write an example of one. Okay. So, have a look. You can tell me already that the difference between an expression and an equation was an equal sign. So what's the difference between an equation and an inequality? Say it again. Okay, it's not an equal sign anymore. It's an inequality sign. So we read this as x on 3 take away x on 5 is greater than or equal to 2. Yes? Okay. Uh, now don't just do it for me just yet. Just raise your hand if you think you could solve this. Just raise your hand. Nice and clear. Yeah? Have a look. Take some time to think about it. Okay, all right, hands down. Now, we're going to solve this one, and I want to point out something very unusual as we do it. Can someone give me a suggestion for a first line? What might I do? Yeah, sure. Uh, cross multiply the 5x, 3x, so 5x minus 3x. Okay, I'm going to pause you there. I'm going to come back to this idea. The phrase I heard was cross multiply. What does, what's cross multiplying about? Like, why do we cross multiply? In a situation like, say this, don't write this down. Uh, in a situation like that, what is the function of cross-multiplying? What, what is it about the next line, which by the way is this? Why is this second line superior to the first? Yeah, Yeah, because, oh, it looks like you guys are like me. You don't like fractions either, so the first thing we do is get rid of them. Okay? So cross-multiplying is a very useful strategy for doing that. Okay? However, back up, have a look at what you've got here. Do you notice a difference between what you've got here and what you have over there? So here, these things are not actually like opposite sides of the equation. These guys are sitting together on this left-hand side, right? It doesn't actually make sense to cross-multiply because you'll get something different over here, which won't be the same over there, right? Uh, just times that side back 15. Ah, okay. So now I'm, now I'm actually getting something more useful. I want to get rid of fractions still, but I want to do something consistently across the whole thing. So instead of saying cross multiplying, which is what I'm doing here, right? Over here, I'm going to whoop, there we go, multiply both sides by 15. Every single term by 15. So tell me, what should I write? 5x minus 3x. 5x take away 3x. Greater than or equal to 13. Cool. All right. So Shannon's got us from line one to line two. Someone to take over from line two to line three. Well, this is an easy one. Come on. Even if you're not awake yet, you could probably have a go at this one. Someone who hasn't said anything yet. I think. What do you reckon, Morgan? Tell me what to do. Uh, you d5 x minus three. Yep. Okay. Now, just before we do that, I'm going to ask you for the answer in a second. Remember, we have words, we have language to describe everything that we're doing, right? As much as possible, be specific with your language. Don't say, do stuff to the things over there, right? What is it? What's the name of the thing we're actually going to be doing? So the answer is 2x. And what do we call this? What have you done to the left-hand side? I think you have terms that are alike. Do you agree? When you've got terms, and they're the same kind of term, and you put them together. What is that called again? That's with a C. Collecting. You're collecting like terms. Thank you. Okay, wait, wait. Good. I haven't done anything to the right hand side. Final line. Final line. What do you reckon, Paul? Yeah. I'll let you just get away with that. The particular inequality sign is it's greater than or equal to. Okay? Are you happy with this solution? Do you think it's true? How would you know whether it's true or not? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Someone want to help her out? What do, you, what do you think? How could we actually know whether we've gotten this right or Wait, not? Is it just you do the left hand side? What do we do to the left hand oh, side? Okay, so if I just back up a little bit to say this guy, right? Or this guy. The way you can know negative 2 or negative 3 satisfy your equation, or the way you can know 33 is, a, 33 is a solution, is you pop it back into the first line. Okay? And you will find 33 divided by 3 is 11. You take away 7, ta-da, it works. Okay? Now over here, 
a little bit trickier because um, what number are you going to test? Well, yeah, because this is actually not one value, is it? This is an infinite number of values, starting from 15, going to 16, 17. Actually, I've missed a whole infinity of solutions already because be between 15 and 16, there's an infinite number of numbers, and I'm suggesting any of those were okay, all right? But I think we're all right. I think these lines look good, okay? Now, just note this, right? All the way as you went through, you basically did this, didn't you? Like, these are the exact principles that you used. You treated this thing more or less like an equation, which is kind of weird to me uh, because if I said to you, here's a word, and here's another word, what's the relationship between those two words? They are opposites, right? If you want to be fancy, you would call them antonyms, right? They mean the opposite thing. So when you're saying to someone, oh, wow, that was really inefficient, versus, wow, that was really inefficient, you are either complimenting them or you're insulting them, and they mean the opposite thing. That's what that prefix means, right? Have you noticed what was just strange in what you just did? You took an object that was the opposite of what we were talking about five minutes ago, and you treated it as exactly the same thing, and you all agree with the solution. Does that not strike you as strange? Okay. And in fact... Yes, yeah, say it again. That's how you best teach us. Yeah, like <laughs> because we told you to do so. Okay. Now, here's where I want to sort of make you not feel so bad. Okay. Yes, we're instructing you to do this because actually, despite how different these things are, most of these principles are the same. But I'm trying to point out the difference because they're not all the same. Okay. So I need a little more space. Underneath this, I want you to think. Okay. Uh, particularly, think of this. Think of all the things you can do to an equation, right? What things have we already seen on the board that you can do to both sides of the equation? Okay, you can multiply by numbers. What else can you do to both sides? You can, you can add, you can subtract, right? What if I gave you an equation like this? What operation is going to get you out of that? You would square, right? Uh, what about an equation like this? What would you do to that? Hmm. You would take the reciprocal of both sides, wouldn't you? Okay. Now I'm pulling these out on purpose because for inequalities, even though they look so very much like equations, there are some really big problems with how you deal with these if you treat them as exactly the same. For example, if A is greater than B, okay, and this one's going to be important, which is why I put it in another color, okay? A pretty stock standard thing to do would be to multiply both sides by a chosen number, okay? So if you chose a positive number, like we chose 3 before, is that still true? A and B are any number such that A is bigger than B, is that still true? I think it is, it still works, right? So for example, 3 is bigger than 2. 9's bigger than 6. So far, so good. Okay. What about this? If I multiply both sides by negative 1, is it still true? So if I said, what did I say? 3 is bigger than 2. That means 9's bigger than 6. So going from line 1 to line 3, if I had negative 3 and negative 2, which way is the inequality sign going? It's, it's flipped around, hasn't it? Right? It's gone in the opposite direction. And the reason why is because these things are actually completely different to these things. Even though so many things can be the same, they're actually fundamentally different objects. Okay? So, multiplication by a negative. What else do you notice on the board might go a bit awry if you have the same operation on both sides and the direction of inequality? Have a think. 3 is bigger than 2. 3 is bigger than 2. So what about a third and a half? Is a third bigger than a half? Is it? It's not, is it? Right. It's also switched around. So if you take reciprocals, it's the same deal. Now, the reason why I'm making such a big deal about this is because students all have trouble with this, right? You treat them just like equal. 
equations and forget actually they're completely different. It's not just like a funny rule, like, oh, when you multiply by negative, you're just supposed to turn the thing around, okay? It's not a rule, it's a different kind of object, right? So you treat it differently, it does different types of things, okay? If you're ever unsure, come back to numbers, which is actually what we're gonna do later this week. We're gonna stop looking at algebra and we're gonna think about numbers and how they work. That way you'll remember, okay, which way are these inequality signs going in? Should I do?